Professor Mark Houghton, Director of the ANU's Institute for Climate, Energy and Disaster Solutions. So this is the, the, the news that we will likely get this 1.5 degrees, albeit not permanent. Does it give us a window into what 1.5 looks like and, and feels like, or is it more about year after year of that and the stress it puts on through sustained warmer temperatures right across the globe? Yeah, good morning. Um, I, I think the really important message here is that we've already got a glimpse of the future through what happened during the black summer here in Australia. And uh, and what we experienced in Australia was not isolated. There was similar experiences in other parts of the world around the Mediterranean, California, Chile, and various others. Um, when we look at this uh, um, projection from the World Meteorological Organization, it's, it's about particular thresholds in a particular year. So um, just a, a single year where we're exceeding 1.5 degrees. Now, when we look at the Paris Agreement, uh, instead of a single year, we deal with multiple years um, exceeding that. So they're not quite equivalent. Um, but what it does show is that the probability is the likelihood of exceeding that 1.5 degrees have increased very significantly over time, so progressively increased. So if we look back at 2015, there was effectively a zero chance of actually exceeding 1.5 in the next five years. Then it went to 20% two years ago, then um, uh, 48% and now 66% um, this year. So every year we do the same sort of calculations. Uh, it's much more likely that we're going to exceed uh, 1.5 degrees in the next five years. And that just tells you about the very strong trends in terms of temperature that we're already experiencing. And so in terms of the, the effect that you said we've already had a glimpse to in terms of some of the, well, in particular, fires you mentioned, when we see so far what is actually happening, because, you know, climate's just so hard to model. So as to what has happened so far, does it point to some things we will be able to adapt to around fires and better management of that? Do you see any hope in what's happened so far? In other words, that there are things we'll be able to adapt to and, and perhaps things that we can't? Indeed. So when we look at the modelling, um, the modelling for temperature is actually very robust. Uh, it's the modelling for rainfall and similar things that is more challenging. Um, and so, um, so when we when we look at the the sort of implications of that for uh, climate change impacts and then for adaptation responses, uh, we can be more and more certain about what sort of conditions we need to respond to. And uh, and at the moment we have a range of adaptation responses for things like high temperatures, uh, but clearly um, they're not adequate to completely remove the additional risk that we're experiencing from climate change. So what we're um, currently doing across the globe is finding better ways to adapt um, and to, to the emerging risks. In Australia, we've dropped the ball for quite a while. We're just starting to pick it up again with the emergence of a national adaptation plan, for example, announced in the budget. So, so we do have quite a lot of catch up to do here in Australia, uh, but I think there is uh, the prospect of blunting but not removing uh, that additional climate risk that climate change brings. Mm. Which increasingly seems to be part of the response, that, that people wanting to make sure we don't... I mean, it looks pretty inevitable to me. We go past 1.5, maybe I'm wrong, but, um, you know, do we get to 2 or not becomes the increasing question. But... Um, adaption will have to be a part of it because we're already, you know, having to adapt. I'm interested in this question. Is it harder to get people to care? Not that they wouldn't care about most people about what could happen, but it just feels so depressing. You find yourself just going, I can't read this story today. And that might be happening more and more. And if things aren't clicked on, maybe media doesn't cover it. If media doesn't cover it, governments aren't as pressured. Is that sort of feedback happening now? Um, well, I think there's a lot of things going on in there. Uh, so when we look at surveys, the vast majority of Australians are concerned about climate change. Uh, they want more action on climate change, but they're not necessarily uh, presented with the options ahead of them which are feasible in their own context. So things which are affordable or practical um, given the, the current day-to-day -day pressures people are under. And so, so part of the challenge for policy and industry uh, is to make change easier for people and 
uh, and that's why we need research and development to actually generate new options which are better and cheaper than the things we currently have. Uh, mm. But when I think people do get those options to change, they do, and they change quite readily. Um, so, for example, we've okay. seen the significant increase in EV uptake here in Australia. Yeah, I, I guess what you're saying is some, something that someone feels like they can actually do rather than going, well, can't fix that uh, next article. We've got to leave it there. We've got heaps to cover, but Mark Howden, thanks for your time.